Hello everybody, Arrow Dance here and welcome to 80th Kilometer. Yeah, I'm gonna play the DLC pack of this game, you know, of 60th Kilometer. Yeah, this is the continuation of that game. So, okay, but look at this, Alexander Petrovich. So, that means that he, he survived, so he's alive here. So that means that in the 60th Kilometer, I did the, the wrong decision. I mean, I, I made him die, but... How, ca how can he survive? I don't know. And look, Irina. Uh, she was not a. Uh, she wasn't a, a very developed character in 60 km. And who's who are, who are those those guys? Anyway, let's get into it, guys. Okay. Yeah. Um. Uh, it's very different the options, right? Look at this. Hmm. Back. Load. Okay. Okay. Let's start it. The choice original story is not taken into account. Emgini Konstantinovich Alexander Petrovich survived. Mm, yeah. Yeah, but Emgini survived too. When well, in my blind gameplay survived, but Alexander didn't make it. Hmm. So that means that in some part uh, of the gameplay, Emgini have to die. I didn't feel bad about that, you know. He's a fucking asshole. Anyway, go. 80th kilometer. Okay, great. I was sitting by the window. I think it thinks over. How could you help my can? How could I help my can? Sorry, fuck. We had almost run out of supplies. Yeah, sorry guys. I said to mess up the world. Sorry. Yeah, I remember Oleg. Uh, oh my god. The pink for disappeared about a year ago. Okay. One year passed. Okay. The world has changed forever. We no longer live, we survive. The main tactic of our group, comprised of a little more than 20 people, was not be as secretary as possible, nearly in invincible. That's what we had to locate the camp of the age of Moscow. In just no Butovo district, we had chose a couple of two stories of houses away from the main roads. It was unlikely how someone would find us here. However, we still have some troubles. We had been surviving on food stolen from the nearest shops for over a year. Oh my god, this was done by the whole camp, and if it hadn't been for a terrible collision nearly half a year ago, there would be twice as many people. Oh my god, they're turning into, a, into thieves. Oh my god, this is pretty, pretty depressing, you know? At that time we still had hope that fate and faith in others. We thought that we world should would change for the better. Now all hope was lost. People were dangerous. They were divided into camps and each camp defend its own interests. War never changed. And it was a state. In a well known computer game. Hmm. <laughs> okay. When there was no food left in nearby shops, some of us began to go on longer sorties. In addition of to food, we also managed to get some seeds. This summer we tried to grow vegetables in order to make stocks for the winter. In August, however, all our hopes were shattered. The weather gave us a nasty surprise, a couple of weeks of frost. The temperature dropped to nearly zero degrees, oh my god that's terrible, which sounds like a made up story for a summer in our area. Spring was very cold, though apparently these were again the consequence of the last year's apocalypse. I remember reading somewhere that such a thing had already happened in August of 1601. 1601 or 161? I have to check it out later. The frost made the Moscow River freeze. It seems to, to me this were the consequence of some South America volcano eruption. It led to massive emissions of ash in air atmosphere. In short, we did not manage to fulfill our agriculture plans. They failed it. They failed. They were already experiencing great problems with food. I could only imagine the trouble with wood have in winter. I don't even dare how picture what might happen. Hmm, man. Oh, this room. There was a knock on the door of my room. Oh, Oleg's room? Yes, come in. Irina. Aleski. This is me. Aleski? Uh, hold on a second. And I'm controlling Alexi? Yeah, do you remember Alexi? That guy that was uh, saved by that old man? Yeah, 
but that old man and this old guy died yeah do you remember that that guy yeah Alexi so I'm controlling Alexi right now what is Oleg so he, he met Irina I wonder what, what was the real I mean the real the real story of Kisses this Kilometer I'm lost right now oh my god Irina entered the room she knocked she looked excited as, as if she was up to something. Has anything happened? No, look here. I got an excellent idea. What is it? Have you come with have you come up with something? Sorry guys, oh my god. Oh, look at her face. This could help us solve our problem. It might work though. I'm not sure. Is I seem to have come up with an idea about where to find supplies for the oncoming year and how to safeguard our life. Okay, <clears throat> sorry guys. Well, now she has more uh, more appearance in this in this story. That's nice. I'm all ears. Surprise me. I had been reading a magazine. Okay, have you come across anything interesting? Don't interrupt me. <laughs> okay, uh, she's mad right now. There was an article about underground construction and various government facilities. Okay, what kind of magazines are you reading? Nothing special. This is just the world of science fiction. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. They sometimes publish information, informative at articles. Okay. So I read this piece about an interesting facility. A government summer house near the city of Chekhov. Okay, Chekhov. I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce the Russian uh, name. Sorry, guys. According to their legend, there is a secret underground branch running to, from Moscow up to that very place in case of a nuclear war. Oh, that's pretty interesting. Oh no, they are, are we seriously going to talk about urban de legends? They're worldless, <laughs> okay, okay. No, listen to me, apart from the beautiful nature surrounding this government summer house, there is a huge underground complex. It was built as a shelter to hide from bombing. Oh, there is everything you need to survive for years to come. The food we need so much. Okay, we are going to find a treasure. Hmm, that's nice. I can see your skepticism, but if we the if the tunnel from Moscow, which is 80 kilometers, okay, the name of this uh, this story, 80 kilometers long, can be just a story. The existence of a huge bunker and a whole complex is beyond any doubt. Doubt. Hmm, okay, so that means that the the goal of this story is, is finding this 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 tunnel, right? Okay, that's pretty interesting. Are you sure? You're talking about it as if you are been to this place? I have never heard about it. We could share my idea with Petrovich, gather a team and go there. Hmm, okay. Oh my god, I miss Alexander, you know? I made him die, oh my god. I feel so bad. You know, I think he has already taken this idea into consideration among others. He has tried out numerous things. It's something we really knows well. He's a military man, you know? Nothing venture, nothing gain. If nobody has settled there yet, it's very unlikely. Then we could try to settle here, settle there, in contradicts with the main principle of our camp in a way, the principle of secret secrecy. This place is quite famous, but it is, it is far away from big cities. Not so many people will risk getting there. Oh. Ira, Ira, what the fuck? I have nothing against. I was sitting here not doing nothing, having no thoughts. Then let's go, okay. She was nearly jumping with joy. She rushed out the room. I closed the door the door of my apartment and followed. We went downstairs to the first floor. The door of the headquarters of our leader was open. I could hear loud voices. Okay. We enter. Hmm. Alexander Petrovich, can we talk to you? Oh, Alexander! I miss you so much! Oh my god, you are alive! <laughs> okay, sorry guys, but I feel... I'm, I'm so happy that Alexander is alive here, you know? Oh my god. I feel so bad when he died, you remember that last time? He walked around the bus silently. Alexander Petrovich was, was lying next, next to it. He wasn't moving. Oh my god. No, Alexander, no! No, my friend! <laughs> No, he was a, a friend. No, Alexander. No! <laughs> oh my god, no, Alexander. 
Oh man. Ah uh, yeah. He's a very good friend, you know. Even he's his hero, his hero, but Bill is a good friend. Alexi, Irina, wait a couple of minutes, take your seats. We sat down. Oh! Sergi! Well, opposing Alexander Petrius and his table, there was Sergi Vitalievich. He greets us. You know, Serge, we have so many problems that your animals worry us the least, the least right now. People might die. You need to know simple rules of behavior when meeting them. We must study these animals to find out how they react to our behavior, okay? Everyone will die if we don't figure how, out how to fix the situation with food. We have enough problems without your animals. Hmm, okay. During our last sortie, I come across another camp, and it's not far away from ours. And apparently, one of them saw me. He saw me from the distance, but still. You know, after that incident, I don't really want to deal with people. At least with people from other camps. Hmm. Okay, but promise me that when there is time, you'll let me do it. Sure. When we manage to solve our current problems, you know, Serge, I have come across those wild boars a couple of times. Or perhaps dogs. He Hell, you'll understand. These animals have not even seen before, and I survived. They just walked past me. Hmm, okay, that's pretty interesting. We can find out which animals are dangerous and which are not. You have to know how to behave in their presence. No interference with the, into the conversation. Sergio Vitali is right. Mm, okay, um... Okay, now I have to choose the, fir the my first options, okay. Yeah... Um, let's, let's choose the second one, okay? Sergio Vitali is right, okay? Here, did you see? Alexi thinks so too. Okay, we'll deal with it later, okay. Okay, I'll go back to my place. If you go on a sortie, I'll join you. Okay, thank you. Servita Lech look at me and, uh, and Irina. Ira, Ira, what the fuck? Before leaving in the room. Okay. Driving to my place sometime. Long time, no see. Sure, something later. Sometime later. Alexander Petrovich, Irina has an interesting idea to share with you concerning we, where we can find food and where we can locate our camp. Really? I'm listening. Irina recalled her idea. While she was talking, Alexander Petrovich said nothing. This way we might have completely safe place for our camp and more importantly, huge supplies for food which last, will last several years. Something which reminds and smile appearance on her face of Alexander Petrovich. <laughs> I remember his smile, it's very awkward. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, I miss Alexander, you know. Oh man. Uh, he's my, my very good friend, you know. I had already thought about it. This is not the only similar option. Okay. And what do you think of it? Too risky. I believe that not only you know about this house, if you can find this information in a magazine. I know of other places with bunkers. Some of them are in Moscow and they are already occupied by someone for sure. The others are simply too far away. Oh. Enough? What if they are not? Why don't we try? We will violate our main principle, secrecy. There is not some big yard of Moscow, this all well-known object that can be visited by people who pursue their own goals and are ready to kill, like those ones we have already met once. Mm, yeah. So maybe it is time to show ourselves. After all, it's a matter of life and death. If we don't do anything, we'll die from hunger. The strongest one will survive, so let's try to become stronger. Yeah. Do you know how often I hear gunshots during my, my sorties to Moscow? I sometimes hear screams. Look at our group. Are many of these people ready to take up arms? And besides, I don't agree with you. The strongest people don't always survive. Those who are able to adjust the environment survive. The smartest one, not the strongest. Hmm. Yeah, uh, you are right, Alexander. Yeah. So our plan is shit? <laughs> okay. Too much risky. The, then the two of us will go there. What? I was quite expecting for me, yeah. If it is safe, if we find supplies there, then we will go back and move our camp there. There is not much time before winter begins. I'm sure it's better than just sitting here. What can prevent you from leaving? If you want to try that, then go for it. But will your assist, assist you? And one, not one, one more thing. The rest of the people in the group cannot be disturbed. You have to be well prepared before you leave. You can come across people and animals on your way. And I don't know which is worse. 
Well, okay, Alexander Petrovich, we'll try to get back fast. And I hope that we will bring back some good news. Okay, but you know, I'm I'm very surprised that Irina ha, uh, has too too much uh, too much appearance. I mean, too much uh, appearance in this story because in 60 kilometers she didn't have a very uh, too much too much appearance. You know, she was a very, wasn't a very good believer character. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Anyway, um, okay, you don't you do that. In the meantime, there are other options to check. Okay. We left the room of Alexander Petrovich. It was dark in the hallway. I grabbed Irina by, the, by her shoulder. The two of us, Irina? Are you sure? Are you afraid of what? I understand Alexander Petrovich. It'll be even better if we split and we'll have several options to find him food. But my plan is really good. Just imagine, there is a good fence there, so we can protect our territory. There are a lot of produce and things of all occasions. There are even seeds. We will be able to grow fresh vegetables and fruits as we have always wanted. Okay. Okay, so we'll set out our on a journey tomorrow. But we have to get ready now. We need to pack the backpack. It would be nice if we visit Sergei Vitalievich before we leave. We wa he wanted to see us. Would you join me? Okay, let's go. We went up to the second floor. Okay. Oh, the contractress. While going down, we met Marina, Maria, sorry, Maria Nikolaevna, yeah, Maria Nikolaevna, I remember that. Maria, no, okay, now in this part, in this uh, story says Maria, because in 60 km, uh, it says Contatres, what the fuck, okay, hello. Hello, Maria Nikolaevna. Is Alexander Petrovich there? I didn't even know what to think, there is nothing to cook from. Only some old pasta, thyme meat, and a bit of flour. I'm afraid that in a week, we will be, we will be not food. Yeah, he has been thinking about it, and we have to. Did you come with something? Did you come up with something? Yeah. There's an idea. It would be great if things work out. We hope to make everyone happy. Okay, good luck to you guys. Thank you. Maria Nikolaevna keep walking and knock on the doors of Sergei Vitalievich. Come in. Mm, look at this place. It's pretty nice. Okay, let's keep from away. Okay, I have to move the microphone a bit, okay? Let's go. We came inside. The apartment of Sergei Vitalievich contained a huge amount of junk, a bunch of some strange tools, some papers, and this was scattered around the room. A working mess. Yeah. What's new, Sergei? Uh, well, nothing that would make you happier. I went on a sortie with Alexander Petrovich yesterday. Okay. As far as we know, you could find anything. Nothing. The shelves of these shops are empty. One of the supermarkets burned to the to the ground. It must have happened some time ago. What are you walking on right now? I've been thinking about will boards. Why do they meet it's edible? Although we call them will wild boards, they only vaguely remind them. There were new, strange animals that appears after the fog. Oh, that's pretty interesting. Some mutants, moreover, they were the only ones, no one else survived. It was difficult to understand what kind of animals they had used to be before the fog. These few faces, deformed bodies, they made strange continuous sounds. They walk in packs and when they came across a human they simply destroyed them. Alexander Petrovich once told us about an occasion when he saw a pair of strangers who tried, tried to shoot these boars in a short range. They didn't care about bullets, dozens of them. No trace of strangers has led to the bow's attack. Hmm. Have you forgotten what they look like? They're disgusting and their meat probably tastes horrible. Yes, it would be difficult to kill at least one of them. Do you remember what Alexander Petrovich has told us? Yes, but we have to study their behavior. Maybe they are able to detect their weak spots. Yes, yeah, right. What are these animals? They are the only animals we have survived after the fog. I don't think you are right when you say that they are the only ones. There were rumors about some strange gigants reminding us a humanoid. Eugenie Konstantinovich once told me that he saw crows. Well, you know how much he drinks. He could have imagined that, but still, <laughs> yeah. That drunk motherfucker. Eugenie Konstantinovich loved drinking. However, there was almost no alcohol. It was a real challenge to find a couple of bottles of vodka. But Eugenie participated in almost every sortie either with Alexander or with, or with the rest of the group. He usually came back with a couple of bottles. 
Sometimes he even managed to find boxes with bottles of alcohol. Oh my god, this drunker motherfucker. During the last month, however, there was no alcohol, and Jinko suddenly became even more angry and irritable. Yeah. So I decided to study their behavior, and I had already obtained some results. So far, there are just my hypotheses. These boards always walk in packs. We know that if they see people, they attack them only when people are aggressive or too close to them. Oh, okay, if we go in a sorting and meet them, what shall we do? Nothing. If they are close to you, then it's best to stay with you without moving. Perhaps they will see that you are not dangerous from them and will simply bypass you. Don't attack them at all. I have never seen the course of this creature, and Alexander Petrovich told me that he saw boards that survive after being shot by those in the bullets. Okay. Sergei Tailevich paused, as, as if asking us if we understood everything. If you see them in the distance, try to avoid them. Don't approach. Okay, got you. And if they don't pass past you, what if they attack us? Sorry, if they don't... Uh, uh, Fuck, sorry guys, okay. Then you'll be dead. You cannot kill them or run away. Okay. Oh, Ultimix. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth, but they will say that once again. They attack nobody without a reason. And one more thing, a couple of times when I I and Alexander went to Scherbinka? Okay, right. We'll pass it in our way to the government summer house. Irina whispered it to me. I heard Muff storm slow times we hit and wait. We hide and wait? Okay. We thought that we came across the other survivors. But what we saw for, from far was no ordinary person. Are you talking about these gigants? Yes, Alexander and I have come across there several times. We had always noticed that them from afar because of their stamping. We saw some silhouettes very far away. I did not have time to see what they looked like, but I can see for sure that these creatures remind humans. But they have a strange bodies, a little enlarged, hide at the same time they are humpback. Oh my god, they are so horrible. Oh fuck. Sounds horrifying, yeah. I hope they will not come across anything like this. Sergio's face changed, he became more relaxed. It's no sense, you should fear something else. You should fear people, they are the most dangerous creature under current circumstances. Yeah, we have already got that. We had been talking about different stuff of some time and then drank some tea. Well, sorry, I wa it was a pleasure to spend time with you. Yeah, he finally said goodbye to Sergei Vitalevich and left his apartment. Rina, well, Alex, see you tomorrow, right? Don't forget to pack your backpack. We will definitely need to make a stop. It won't be I won't be able to walk more than 40 kilometers at once. Check your weapons. Go to Maria Nikolaevna to have a meal and don't not forget to take some water. Okay. Irina, I'm not like a little boy and this is not my first time on a sortie. Everything will be fine. We need to get a, food, a good night's sleep as we will sit our trips early in the morning. Will you come around with this in the evening before going to bed? Uh, Irina smiled. Oh, oh my god. Okay. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. And we went to our apartments. Oh my god. What the are these guys are up to? Oh fuck. Okay, okay. So my, my god, okay. Till late night, keep packing and get ready for our sorting. The backpack was huge. In addition, we decided to take our tank, which we could do without it. Stay in someone's house, for example. On the other hand, it was unpleasant to sleep in someone else's bed after having discovered a corpse of a person who died choking for, for, in the fog. Yes, we can across courses to kite off and especially indoors. Oh my god. We said we would mainly move roads, fields and partly along ordinary roads. The farthest of Moscow. The less popular are the areas. And where is Oleg? I want to know where is Oleg right now. Uh, Marina survived in this, in this story. And what happened to Olga? Irina did not show up in the evening. I lie in bed thinking over the details of a sortie. I tried to imagine what difficulties we might encounter. Then I fell asleep. In the morning was awoken by a knock at the door. Hey Alexi, are you ready? I jump on the bed and look at my watch. It was 8 o'clock. We planned to set out an 8th. Okay. Then I always then I always sleep, yeah. Irina came into my room and without asking for permission found me in underpants. Wow, you are not ready. 
Well, you could take a, you could have asked if you can enter. Yeah, have you packed? Yes, I did yesterday. Okay, get dressed. I'll be waiting for you downstairs. Okay, Lina went out. I dressed quickly at the same time, trying to understand where I had not forgotten anything or not. I took a gun from the table and I fixed out my belt. Okay. I went upstairs and left the block. There really stood, stood a crowd of five men. Among them, there was our leader, Alexander Petrovich. Oh, good morning, Alexei. I repeat it once again, your presence. If there is any difficulties on your way, you better come back. Be very careful, and God forbid you to bring back the trail when you return. No one should know about the camp. Make sure that no one is watching you. Okay. The principle of secrecy. Yes, yes, I remember. You suddenly come, come, coma across someone. Come, it's no coma. Come, come. If you suddenly come across someone, people or animals. It does not matter. It's better to bypass them. If there is a possibility to avoid a meeting, always use it. Alexander, you say some nothing new. This is not the first sortie. Yeah, but you usually go with me. Yeah, I would go with you. This motherfucker, oh my god, he wants to go everywhere, oh, damn it, oh man, I, okay, now remember in 60 kilometers you, you can kill him, I remember when he goes crazy, yeah, in some part, yeah, I remember in some part of the, of the road, <laughs> why didn't kill you be, uh, be better, huh, Eunjin, you're, you're very, you're very annoying motherfucker. No, Jin, you will stay with me. We have other plans. We got to go to Moscow to explore the area. Rina, look at her watching with an indignant face. <laughs> face, sorry. Is that all? Can we go now? You can go. Good luck to the two of you. Okay. Thank you. He finally set off. First of all, we had to get to Scherfinka and then cut through the fields or reach the track. Rina, apparently the situation is very critical. I don't think that in the old days Alexander Petrovich would let the two of us go. Yeah. Yeah, because it was a pin fog in that in that part. You remember that? I don't I don't know I don't think the that we would agree to go such a trip with the old days. Yeah. The morning was cloudy and rather cold. We walked quickly in the hour we reached out to the old skills of Chernvika. The streets were as gloomy as in Moscow. Hmm, the music is pretty nice. Broken cars, burnt houses, strange rubbish everywhere. Here we slow down the, pa the pace and look around. We we'll stop and listen. But so far we were surrounded by complete silence. Oh my god. Okay guys, uh, for our first episode, I'm gonna end it right here, okay guys? This is a place, uh, good uh, point to save, okay? Here. Alright, uh, how can I back? Back here? Let's see. Oh, oh, okay, this, play this is for getting back. That's pretty nice. So now you can get back. Okay, this is pretty cool. Okay, um, what happened if I... Let's see, let me see. Oh. Okay, okay. So you can back... You can back in some point, not... Oh, okay, okay, I got you. Okay, uh, how can I escape from this place? Oh, skipping, no. Um, okay, save. Oh, here. Okay, sorry, guys. Okay. Yes, okay. I'm gonna end it right here, guys. Um, Yeah. This is our first episode of 80 kilometer. Okay, that's pretty cool. All right. So in the next episode, we will see what happens uh, with with our tweet, yeah, of Alexi and Irina. All right. And I wonder if Oleg will will appear in this in this, in this story. You know. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this this video. Okay. Uh, give it a like, comment about this, and subscribe. Okay. I wanna know uh, what do you think about this gameplay. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. So, stay tuned.